Hickok 45 here, and you know, there was a time when revolvers ruled. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Click. Yes, six shooters ruled, revolvers ruled, and this model 686-1 was pretty popular and still is and that's what the subject is today we're glad you came by we're glad that so many of you actually like revolvers whether you own them yet or not it's just a matter of time you will you know it you're going to have a revolver in your possession uh, before too many more months or years i just know it i can feel it in my bones they're just way too much fun to shoot. They're historical, maybe hysterical. Uh, they're just great uh, pieces of machinery, okay? And you know, I like all the pieces of machinery that fire bullets, right? Whether it's an AR-15 or a Glock or an M&P or a Ruger, an FN, it's all good. But uh, so are these, all right? So yeah, I am preaching again, right? So glad you came by. And uh, I mean, uh, got some 38 specials too, don't I? A few, but we'll shoot mostly Magnums since this is a Magnum, all right? So these are actually, uh, yeah, Hydroshock. Old school Hydroshock, jacketed hollow point, okay? A uh, lot of good ammo out there now, and of course Federal makes a lot of it. The uh, the Hydroshock, I guess is a little bit dated, you know, maybe for you know, when you think of what you're going to put in your uh, semi-automatic pistol and that kind of thing. I think it, it, with a revolver especially, if you've got a 158 grain magnum round, uh, you know, hollow point, if that's what you want, you know, it, it's not quite... Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think with a, depending on what you're doing, if you're hunting, you know, you're hunting wild boar or whatever you're hunting, you want the best bullet you can get. But for a defensive round, a 357 Magnum, whew, it's all good. Just some might be a little better than others, right? You know, a lot of people swear by the 125 grain hollow point, you know, over the 158 grain hollow point. Uh, but yeah, 158 is kind of the classic round, I think, for the 357 Magnum, even the 38 Special. Uh, but anyway, I tend to like heavier bullets, but depends on your purpose. So yeah, this is uh, this is pretty cool. I, I I bought this recently. I got some others out here to just compare, just a reminder. I'm not going to go into a giant comparison, but just to remind you what the L frame is, the Smith and Wesson. We have a video, in fact, on. Uh, uh, Smith and Wesson frame sizes, so you can look that up. But this is the L. It's between the the K frame, which is this model 19. Uh, it has a K frame. It's a little bit lighter weight, a little bit smaller frame, and uh, very very popular. Great gun, of course. And then you got the end frame on the other side. You got the big old 44 mag end frame. Okay, and of course you can get 357s, you know, in the end frame as well, the Model 27, Model 28, some others. So you got the uh, relatively small frame, and then you got the L frame, and you got the bigger frame. Okay, and then there's others. You got the big old X frame, you got little J frame, you know, the pocket guns and that sort of thing. But this is the K frame, 357. This is the, the end frame. It's a little bit bigger, okay? And before I go any further, speaking, look what I'm pointing at. Those beautiful uh, silver eagles from Atmex.com. So I want to remind you that Atmex.com is a great supporter. And you can get any of your precious metals there. Silver gold, the numismatic coins, silver dollars, silver eagles, just whatever you'd like. Check the links in our description. Okay? There's a Hickok 45's favorite page. And you got the Atmex.com link there. Very reputable outfit. So check them out. Uh, so let's go back to some of this precious metal. I'll tell you how uh, I got the python out here. Let me drag it over here too for a little comparison. Because <laughs> in, in a way that might have given birth to the model 586 and 686. The python's been around a good while. And it had that under lug on the barrel. Of course, it had that beautiful rib as well. And, you know, everybody likes the python. Just to, even if you don't uh, you like it enough to carry it or buy one. You have to admit they're just beautiful. Even this 2020 Python, they're just beautiful, right? And uh, you just can't get around that. And having a full-length underlug, uh, it's just an attractive uh, feature of a handgun, I think, on a revolver. You know, this doesn't have that cool rib 
but it's still a nice, nice gun. It's a Smith & Wesson. This L frame is considered, you know, 357. Uh, just maybe the one of the very best all-around revolvers ever made, okay? Because it's just the right weight. It'll handle the, the hot loads and it's fun to shoot. Handles recoil pretty well because you got that added weight. And just, just a sweet gun. Came about in uh, 1980, 81. I think 80, uh, probably didn't sell a lot until 81. And then around 86, they had their first dash. You know how Smith & Wesson does. If you got a dash three, dash eight, whatever, that means there was some change made in that model. Improvement, quote unquote. Uh, so this one came about in 87. 86 is when they came about the dash one. This is a 686 dash one, okay? So pretty early model. And uh, I like it. I like it. I'm a, oh, look at those. Clay pigeons. I bet you didn't think I could shoot a clay pigeon with this thing. Let's shoot the uh, clay pot off of it first. <laughs> See if I can pick off what's left of it. All right, what a marksman. Boom! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Wow. Uh, let's go over and put the hit one on the hip, the gong, I'm trying to say. Yeah, it gets there pretty fast, huh? Yeah, I think that's empty. Yeah. You reckon those Hydroshock hollow points expanded on the gong? I bet they did. I bet they did. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, too, that uh, one reason I have this, I, you know, I, we don't get into the, the Python issue and all that. You know, and, again, this is the one that came back. Uh, we, uh, we did get it back, and we'll be doing video with it and everything. It's working fine now. But, uh, uh I was all set for a four and a quarter inch 2020 Python, really. And, you know, and then we had the issue with this and then the time and, and the four and a quarter inch barrels just don't seem to be out there even yet and all that. So I was all ready to, to get one, you know, especially with the action it's supposed to be stronger and all that, uh, just as a good shooter. Well, uh, I, I, I realized, I don't know when that would happen. I said, you know what, I wouldn't mind having a four inch 686 because that's kind of the counterpart. And I found one that, uh, again, this one, <laughs> yeah. And uh, they're not cheap, I'll tell you. These things have become kind of collectible. And this has the combat grips on it, combat magnum grips or whatever. And, and they are expensive. They're like you know, two or 300 bucks just for the grips. And I like those. I've never had that, those specific grips on one, but uh, so anyway, I bought it, kind of filled it, it, uh, it scratched that itch, okay? Because I, I like them, and uh, they're just wonderful guys. These things came about in, uh, I guess, gosh, two inch barrels, three inch barrels, four, uh, maybe even five, but six inch barrels. And I had a six inch barrel, and that would have been, when did I buy that? It was in the 80s. That was probably about a, a 686 dash one. It might have been, yeah, in a six inch. And I always regret trading it off or selling it. So, you know, I like a three inch barrel, but a four inch barrel is pretty nice too. Let's pop, let's smoke a little more pot first. Woo! Hot dog. Let's see if we can hit that paper target somewhere. Wow, what a marksman. Woo! Amazing. What an accurate handgun. Oh, look at those two liters laughing at me. <laughs> hey, really laughing. Yeah, not now, not laughing now. This thing has a very light uh, single action trigger, I tell you. Woo. It, it's almost too light. I have found myself firing it before I really meant to, uh, not in a dangerous way, but you know, you bring it up, cock it, and you're about on target and play bang, you know. It's just very, very light. Wow. Great gun, you know, nice action. We're clear. Yeah, you know, I've been trying to short stroke it, but I just can't figure out how you do that. <laughs> I'll never let that joke ride one. Yeah, or die. So I mean it's it's a these are good old guns. Again, you got the heavyweight barrel and they're Smith and Wesson. And they tend to work. Uh 
just yeah no the simplicity of a revolver is one of the appeals it really is and the versatility let me open up a little uh 38 special these are really light yeah these are really lightweight and uh they're fun to shoot too great great firearm to take out with someone who's a new shooter oh wow this one right here for example uh, or even in a six inch barrel or three, but shooting this lightweight 38 special because this is not even carry ammo, it's just target ammo. You know, nobody is going to be bothered too much by the recoil, for example. Like even me, I'm going to shoot that Kentucky two liter. <laughs> All right, how about a bowling pin? How about, how about that two liter that didn't get quite blown up enough here? There we go. Oh, and a red one. I see a pig right behind it. Uh, uh, there's no way this round will go, go through it and hit the pig, even though it's directly behind. And, uh, maybe I'll hit the pig anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you I've got one left for the gong. I don't know if I hit it or not. I think I did. Those aren't going very fast, so maybe don't get. Oh, I know one thing about the gong too. I meant to. I was over there painting it, and it uh, it's kind of about dragging the ground. I need to go over there and do some work on it and wire it up so it's not. You know, it needs to be hanging freely, or you can't hear. Those are too weak. I'm not going to shoot more of those. Yeah, we need to shoot some magnums in this thing. Some more magnums. That's what we got here. Yeah, good old federal, 158 grain, jacketed soft point. Good round, good round. What else was I gonna tell you about? I'm not gonna keep you too late because I know y'all are busy people. Uh, I did shoot this if you saw the uh, Sunday shoot around either last week or week before. Hope you're catching the Sunday shoot arounds because every Sunday, okay, a video every Sunday, there's still a lot of people that come in and say, oh, you're still making videos. I didn't know that. It's so funny because we do three videos a week, maybe more. And uh, people just, uh, I don't know, I, I guess some people just uh, catch our videos from the recommended uh, list or something. <laughs> they don't even realize when we have a new video necessarily if it doesn't happen to be recommended or doesn't show up. And of course, uh, boy, I hate to rely on YouTube for that. But anyway, go to pers anybody's home channel anytime and just click videos and then look at recent videos. You can see what they've been doing for the last week or months or whatever. It's what I do. So... Uh, our channel, our channel is called what, John? I think it's Hickok 45. Yeah, just go to the home channel and try to keep up. You know, I'm really worried about some of you just not doing your homework. All right. You know, we've not killed any big game yet, have we? Well, let's just try a buffalo break in this new revolver. All right. It's official. We killed a buffalo. How about a ram or a sheep? All right. Might as well try for a little piggy. Oh, I knew that was high. Oh, I knew that one was right on. I think I have one more bullet. No, I have two. What do you want me to shoot? Okay, somebody said I hadn't shot the cowboy. I heard that. So let's put one on him. All right. Yep, I heard somebody say cinder block. Let's finish off that cinder. <laughs> we created some dust. That's cool. So yeah, I'll let y'all get to, get to dinner or get to breakfast. Uh, you know, I still don't know when you all watch us. I, I really don't. We, we're trying to get an app that'll let us know, but whether you're watching in the morning and at the evening, at lunchtime, I'd like to know when everybody's watching so I can track all of you, but uh, just can't do that yet. So, yeah, the L-Frame, been around, uh, now they made it, I think, from about 1980, 81 until uh, 99, long in there. You now, I think it was offered in, I don't know, different configurations, maybe a little bit after that, but it, and then it went away, kind of. And then they brought it back with the classic series around 2013, I think, the 586 and the 686. You know, the 586 is the blue version of this gun. And I think they came out about the same time, because by then, Smith was offering, of course, every 
revolver in both blue, I guess every revolver, both blue and you know stainless. So, so around the same time, I think the 586 and the 686 you know, uh, were available, 8081. And uh, now in the classic series, uh, I guess that's just in the blue, blue version. Okay, and so they they brought up you know so many of their models back. They're a little different, as you know. You know, the, some of them have the key lock. I guess all of them, the sleeve barrels and the frame mounted firing pin. They're different. Uh, you know, I've talked about that before. In my estimation, they're not really truly classics because they're different. But they're similar. They're similar, and I'm. Uh, it's a little bit of a dilemma. I think a lot of us are torn between really being critical, highly critical of them because they're not just like this, you know. Uh, which you know, if you're going to remake the gun, you'd like to think it'd be just like this one, and they're not. Uh, they're supposed to be even better made, and yeah, maybe I don't know. These work fine though. So, uh, so is your definition of classic, I guess, comes down to that. Uh, I, I could argue both sides of it. I'm glad they're doing it. You know, it'd be worse, I guess, if they weren't, if they just totally ignored these old guns and it's just, they were not available at all unless you bought an old one. You know, so, and a lot of young people, uh, maybe who haven't followed Smith and Wesson or anybody who got into guns just in the last five years or 10 years, you know, they don't really recognize the difference. They don't have a history with these that I do. And so it doesn't really matter to them anyway, perhaps so. So, so it's, it's on balance, it's a good thing they're doing, okay? So the 686-1 is what I have here with the combat grips, even though I may not go into combat with it. Uh, they feel really good, they, they really do. It's a square butt, this model. They make them in round, but you know, they did. Uh, so uh, that's what I've got, and I'm glad to have it. You know, I like revolvers, and uh, you know, you should too. Uh, if you don't, for some reason, uh, I suggest some therapy, okay? You need to talk to somebody about it, okay? It's a problem that you're not alone. There are others that have that problem. Not a lot, but there's still other people that share that deficiency in their character, okay, and their upbringing. Uh, but it can be remedied. You know, watch a lot of our videos. Uh, go, go fondle a couple of them at your favorite gun shop or gun range. Take a few shots with it. And, uh, yeah, you can be converted. I'm confident of that. So, anyway, I'll quit being silly. Really appreciate your support. I uh, appreciate you coming out to, to enjoy this firearm with us because the, they're just they're just jewels. It's fun to shoot. There's nothing on the planet probably more versatile, and more fun than a 357 Magnum revolver. You can shoot a, you know, long, a, a, a large array of ammunition, power factors, 38 special, magnums, hot magnums, heavy magnums, light 38 specials like those I was firing, very light. Uh, 38 Special Plus P, that's pretty good defensive round, you know, you get the hollow point, you get all kinds of ammo in 38 and 357 Magnum, and uh, the whole family, you know, can enjoy it. So anyway, come back and see us, and uh, we'll be here. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here, also uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.